follow time to our NX when we carry out the fair and all you carry to the whole time.
The second aspect of our uh, support lies in the award we present. I have here in front of me samples of the awards which we presented during this year and last year. These uh, awards are all Irish made and where possible they have been made them. Now these statues are the transmission of Irish hands. We want to often see imported items of inferior quality. While we have, as I said, some beautiful Irish uh, workmanship. There are Irish manufacturers who are capable of producing the very best. I think, as I've already said, in looking at these statuettes which are being worn today, that these statuettes bear out what I have already said. I feel that Northern Chambers, Scope in Ireland, are in a unique position to help Irish industry by specifying four manufactured trophies for their competition. As I have already said, we see two of them important afternoons of a much inferior quality on the stage. And I would say to them, be a sport, is what I say, to open by Irish. Thank them to say 
safety workers and hopefully in the safety world of <laughs> Why is it an honor for me? 
why it was a pleasure for me to accept this invitation. Because since I was appointed Minister of State for the Department of Education with responsibility for sport, I have mentioned on numerous occasions, anywhere I got the opportunity, the major contribution that's made by the voluntary people, by the people who do it on a voluntary basis in this country. And I am very pleased indeed to come back here because here a year and a half ago, I think this is the third year in which this scheme has been in operation, and it is here it's started to give recognition to those people who do so much in the background, so to speak. And I think on the last occasion when I was here, when I made a presentation to the, uh, the awards of that occasion, I did mention that you would never have the Jack O'Shea's or the Barry McWilliams or those were it not for the fact that you have so many people on a voluntary basis doing so much in the background. Now the nine people who would be presented with awards are from a wide range of sporting organisations and they are within the backbone of Irish sport. Society has without doubt become more materialistic in recent years and it is therefore refreshing to meet so many people who are happy to give the of themselves in a purely voluntary capacity to enable others to experience the satisfaction of fulfillment which can be derived from participation in sport. I would like to take on record here my deepest appreciation of their efforts. Congratulations are also due to the City of Limerick Sports Advisory Body, who pioneered this scheme and who have proved over the years to be one of the most active and effective sports advisory bodies in the country. Today again we have ample demonstration of their enthusiasm and commitment to fostering the development of sport in Limerick. I would like to thank judging panel, whose task it was to choose the award winner, the time and effort which they put into the scheme is very much appreciated. And I was looking during the meeting that the list uh, that they had to go through, I can assure the people here this evening, it wasn't an easy task, so I would say to the judges, thanks very much for the job well done. If I may be so bold to single out two people for special mention for their work in this regard. I would like to mention Jerry Bock, Chairman of the Sports Advisory Body, and Mary Costello, who was recently awarded the Good Four Irish Mutual Building Society Women in Sport Award, are both stalwarts of the Sports Advisory Body and are targets workers in the promotion of sport in the city. I would like also to express my appreciation to the Chief Executive Officer of the Limited City Vocational Education Committee, Mr. Mossy Kelly, for his continuing support to the Sports Advisory Body. I would like to congratulate the recipients of the award here on this occasion. And I hope that you continue this present involvement in sport and the crucial work which you do so well. I would just like to mention, and I, I am a little bit inhibited in mentioning the point made by Jerry Fox here in relation to the National Sports Centre. But as he mentioned, mentioned it, I just want to make just a few brief comments. When I was appointed, first of all, as Minister with Responsibility for Sport, I set out on two main objectives. And one was, what I felt was long overdue, the provision here in this country for our athletes of a national sports centre. Now I did set up a committee and they'll be reporting back shortly. I don't want to do anything in any way that would preempt their recommendation. I think Limerick is well represented on that committee, but one of the things that have pleased me more than anything else is the great interest there is on this centre right throughout the country. I sincerely hope that when we have the second objective which I set out was the introduction of a sports lottery. It is not a sports lottery, but it is a state uh, lottery, which I hope the benefit major portion will be devoted and diverted towards sport. And it's on those two main objectives that I feel it's so important in the promotion of sport in this country. I have no doubt that the lottery will be a success. I have no doubt that we will see it uh, becoming uh, are coming into effect this year, 1986, and then that we will have uh, resources available from that lottery to make sure that we will provide this national sports centre. In fact, I understand this maybe are meeting representatives here from Limerick sometime later this week. I should mention at this stage that uh, we were all considering the clause on the application form that canvassing was disqualified, so I'm just saying that to <laughs> But I can assure all I would say in relation to the National Sports Centre and the Limerick application, I'm delighted to see people uh, following this up and uh, making a strong case. All I would say is that I am quite confident and happy that that commission will deal 
uh, very generously and sympathetically wish the Limerick application, but also to bear in mind that we have many, many, many applications, and I'm glad that we have. Chairman, I want to give Jane in conclusion, I want to congratulate all the award winners here this, uh, this evening, and to say how honored and how pleased I am to be with you, and it is indeed a great pleasure for me to be asked to make the presentation of the award for a minimum of it. As a variety of sports of the, the uh, village. Uh, shortly after then he decided that he would promote badminton. Now he knew absolutely nothing about the game, but he set up his reacting to the Mikon Badminton Association, which today is thriving and is one of the, one of the best associations in the country. Um, uh, to learn about the game then he travelled the length and breadth of Munster, watched all the top players and spent his nights reading all the admission books he could get and immediately then he started coaching the youngsters and most evenings he would be seen in the hall, the, the hall attached to the CBS in there from 4 o'clock until tea time and then shortly after tea until about 10 o'clock coaching all the juveniles from the area. Now most of those went on to become the top players in the country and many many of them have represented Ireland. In fact I think the Deputy Commissioner would probably know one of them, Pat Marin. He's, um, he represented the guards there recently in, in uh, I think it was the world competition and he in fact won. Um, another of uh, the young players in the one of the, the brightest stars in Ireland, more than Tommy Reedy, was actually playing for Hungary, or playing in Hungary for Ireland the last weekend. Um, he was also interested in swimming and started a swimming club. And um, he has about 100 youngsters now going up to Bonnore on Friday nights. And is teaching them, maybe not in Michael O'Carey's style, but he is managing to get them to, to swim. He also started um, a golf club in the dare, and a lot of people there now are playing on a very, very good night, like four or five, and two of them good in golf, and not, I'm not terribly well up in it. Um, he was also involved in other areas, he called Tim Whistle at the Accordion, and various other things in the school. Um, Brother Duan is 50 years in religious life this year, and just retired from teaching, but is still as interested and devoted to the sport as he ever was. 
unfortunately he couldn't be with us this evening, he's in America, and he's held in such high esteem in the area and the surrounding areas that um, the people had a connection and they gave him apparently a one to note, they paid for his trip and um, gave him a gift as well. So um, Barry Reardon, who is teaching in CES in Adair, is here to accept the award on behalf of Robert Dwan.
straight away he'd sick, there was something wrong with him. But in fact, he told me he had been up at 5.30 that morning to go to the pool and uh, he was going to be up again early the next morning. So he, the pattern of his life is that he is at the pool most mornings at 6 o'clock. Uh, he stays there until 8. Then um, he comes back, does a normal day's work. Lunchtime, again, he goes to school. And um, most evenings he is swimming or coaching again. It's a fair commitment. Um, the only point I would make is that Michael has failed in one respect. He has been trying for the past two years to get me into a pool, but so far he has failed. <laughs> Other than that, he has fantastic commitment to swimming. Mary has been Secretary of the Union 
this night is Sunday six. She has been mother and sister and whole family, so whole host of young and she is out there for an hour more people to get to remember. She has acted as coach trainer during this period, one in which uh, Dunin has been in one of the top ten clubs in Ireland over the past five years and in 1983 won the Premier Award, being judged to be the top yellow in Ireland. She has devoted all her spare time to athletics, uh, attending meetings globally and nationally, as I already said, coaching as well. She has held the position of public relations officer, delegate to the county board, delegate to the Munster Council, and delegate to the national executive of BLOE, as well as having the distinction of managing Irish Juvenile Team to Crystal Palace, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, as well as managing an Irish senior team. Mary also has been the Irish delegate to the Olympic Academy in Greece. A very good respect, Mary Ryan. Thank you. 